I know this is very different from the last time you guys saw anything, but basically, since I need these spindles that I had up top, like I showed you guys, to have the drilled out tie rod end uh, location, I went ahead and got the ones from up top. I removed the hubs, smacked the studs out because I felt like it. I also removed the dust covers here, the brake dust shields, because I'm either going to put new bearings in these or get new hubs entirely. And we will also be putting these three inch studs in whatever hubs I have. So regardless, I wanted to get this set so I can clean the rust off of them. Obviously, with the way everything else is, I want my spindles to be nice and pretty, kind of like everything else has been. So I will clean these up off camera, mainly because of time, not because I don't want to show you guys. So current situation is I took both of these spindles or uprights, knuckles, whatever you want to call them. So I took these to where I had a drill press and I did this side first, which this is the passenger side. Got it drilled in, fine, whatever. On this side, I don't know how much you guys can tell, but it's twisted uh, that way. And then from this angle, it's bent a little bit, you know, twisted, whatever, compared to this side, which looks like that. I need a new driver's side knuckle. So I did still drill the hole, don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna buy another driver's side. I might just get a pair, but I gotta go to the junkyard now and get another one and re-drill it. The other thing that I realized is the studs that I got need to be drilled out too. So I don't actually have, or I didn't have the drill bit with it and it doesn't say in the instructions what size I needed. So I got uh, the right drill bit, it's a 39 64ths. I'll go ahead and drill those in with the press too and we'll get rolling. So I think this is gonna be our new donor car for the spindles. So just gotta take all this crap apart from this little V6 Mustang. Mind the airplane, it's kind of what happens when you uh, work outside sometimes, right? But got the new one, you can see much, much better than the other one that I had. The reason that I went over to this car is because the one on this car looked twisted too. So it was definitely better than the one that I have, but this is the best driver's head one that I've come across. So we'll stick with this. Um, I'm also gonna grab a tailgate one here, I think. Duramax needs it. We have both of these painted up. Obviously I did that off camera just because I did it at my house. These are now repacked with the grease that we actually wanna use. I had to drill these out with the drill press in order to get these ARP studs in and press them in. That was also done off camera because I did it at my girlfriend's dad's workshop. I don't have a press or a drill press, so can't do that here. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is install these onto here and then we're ready to put our bump steer kit in from Maximum Motorsports. So we can actually have steering in the car finally, which that is gonna be pretty dang cool because it's kind of just been an awkward, weird roller for a bit. So let me go ahead and do that and then we'll go on to the next thing. So in my infinite genius, I was jacking up the front of the car from here with the motor in, cause I don't know, lapse of judgment, rookie move, whatever. So I bent this up a good bit, but it is what it is. I have a lower radiator sport piece, a tubular one that I was gonna put in here eventually, I guess, but now I'm doing it sooner than later. So yeah, don't, I'm so stupid because this was a very nice piece. I got the outer tie rods on. The only thing is, is I don't have this nut to actually lock it in place. Not that I'm at the point where I would have to, but I need one for both sides. I have it on just like that for now at least. Basically, to my understanding, you wanna make this completely level, but I'm not at that point yet because I don't even have the car leveled out. I haven't measured my ride height. I don't have any of that set up yet. So I think I'm gonna end up just making a video on me aligning all of the Maximum Motorsports parts in the future. But for now, obviously, I've just been kind of installing everything roughly where I should. The other thing I have to do is I have to tighten the wheel uh, nut here. I don't have a torque wrench that goes up to the amount of foot pounds that it is. It's 200 to 238 or something like that. 
and my torque wrench only goes up to 150. So I'll have to get a different torque wrench or rent it, but I got this pretty much in place and now the car actually has steering. Sorry I didn't record me putting those tie rods in, really, you know, kind of twofold. One, I don't have the uh, nut there, as I said. And then the other thing is, is that kind of bummed me out. I just wasn't in the mood to record. I really wasn't even in the mood to come here today. Don't know why, just for some odd reason, but still came in, still got some good stuff done and some not so good stuff. But it's all part of it, I guess. And we'll move on to the next thing. So I'm back the next day after messing this up. And I talked to a buddy of mine and he brought up a great point, which is I can either cut that out and just basically throw it away or I can practice some metal work. So I'm going to do that. I don't exactly have a game plan yet, but I do have a torch and some hammers and things and I don't have a big pry bar, but I do have a big uh, screwdriver. I do have a screwdriver. So we're gonna see if we can straighten this back out. If I can and I can get it good, I'm gonna go ahead and just run it. If I can't, I continue plan A, which was to cut this thing out and replace it with the Team Z tubular one. wasn't really doing what I wanted it to and then I had an idea I, I think you can see where I'm kind of going with this gonna jack the car up in a way that will push this down I'm gonna center it up more the small like thin metal here I can bend back straight once that gets bent up because I'm sure it will but uh I think jacking it up into the bottom of the truck here will actually straighten this out a lot easier than what I was doing wish me luck So here's my final product, which is obviously not as good as it was before I messed it up, but it's a lot better than it was after I messed it up. But it's relatively level and uh, pretty dang straight. So I'll live with it. You aren't really gonna see it. I am pretty bummed out that it happened, but you know, it's part of it. So now that that's done, I can move on to doing our normal stuff and actually being motivated to work on this dang thing. But it's Father's Day, so I'm going to get lunch with my father, as you should. So, push her back in. I'll get out of here for a bit and uh, move on to... I, I really don't know what I'm going to do next. Went ahead and did a few things here. I replaced the spark plugs inside of the motor. Don't think I had a real reason to record that for you guys. Same thing with this. Replaced this hose because I had a nice bend on the top of it. I put the... Uh, dust caps on these wheel bearings and I torque them down. I think I want to get this motor running. I think that's going to be the next thing is just hearing this thing turn over. I'm not going to put all the accessory drives on. I'm not going to do everything because I'm not really at that point. But I do think that it's worth hearing the motor for two reasons. One, I did the oil pump gears as you guys saw and I didn't confirm that everything was right. And two, the bigger one is I've never heard this motor run. So for all I know, it could have been blown up. Everything looks right, but you don't know until you hear a turn over and actually start up. I think the next thing we're gonna do is actually take the motor back out and get to installing the clutch and everything so that we can get a starter on it and get this thing turned over once I have the fuel system. I do want to patch that one spot underneath there before I put the motor back in, but you know, you'll, you'll see that as we go. we have this out of the engine bay 
I took the studs out for the exhaust and I'm just gonna run a quick tap inside of here. That way I make sure these threads are all good. I know they all should be and they look good and all that, but they, they're a little messy inside. Kind of hard to tell on camera. So that is what I got out of one of these holes. I don't know if they just don't clean them very well from Ford, but that gives you an idea as to why I'm doing it. And it will help make sure that all of these are actually torqued down equally. And that's what helps these gaskets seal up really well. So definitely recommend doing it if you can. All right, but this 